Experimental and Non-Experimental Research Design. We will start this lecture with a brief review of the previous lecture. And the topics of this lecture are 1. Random Experimental Research Design 2. Quasi-Experimental Research Design 3. Non-Experimental Research Design 4. Research Validities 5. Analysis of Change Over Time and we will conclude this lecture with a summary. In the previous lecture, first we learned the purpose of re research design, which is controlling spurious effects from research conclusion. Second, we learned four options and procedures of controlling. One, holding conditions or factors constant. 2. Building conditions or factors into the design as independent variables. 3. Randomization. And 4. Statistical adjustments or control. 3rd. We learned the concept of randomization, specifically random assignment. This random assignment spreads the effects of other variable evenly across the groups of the study. At last, we learned the definition and the concept of characteristics of a good research design. The definition of a good research design could be a design that has a good control of extraneous or spurious variables. In other words, through good research design, one is able to identify, balance, minimize, or eliminate extraneous variables' effects onto dependent variables. The definition of an experimental research is a research situation in which at least one independent variable called the experimental variable is deliberately manipulated or varied by a researcher. The table illustrates examples of the experimental variables. As we can see these examples, researcher must define or decide the levels of experimental variable and assign subjects into the defined levels of experimental variable. There are two different types of experimental research. The first one is a random or true, and the other one is a quasi-experimental research. Both of them assign subjects into the levels of the given independent variable, which is the experimental variable. If one is randomly assigning a subject, that research design becomes random or true experimental design. If one is assigning subjects in a non-random way, that research design becomes a quasi-experimental design. Let's learn more details of random or true experimental design. Let's see this research design example. In this example, we randomly assign students into the old teaching method class and the new teaching method class. Can you identify the experimental variable in this research design? And can you identify a possible experimental variable in your own research design? In previous lecture, we learned the superiority of random assignment in terms of research validity. Again, the random assignment spreads the effects of other variable evenly across the groups of study. Consequently, the research design with the random assignment, in other words, the random experimental research, is more internally valid. However, there is no free lunch in research area as well. We, think, we can think about several downsides of experimental research. There are several theoretical challenges in implementing in experimental research. If we have too many levels of an experimental variable, an experimental research is hard to be implemented and requires more subject size. Sometimes it is theoretically impossible to assign subjects into different level of an independent variable of interest. For example, what if your independent variable is gender? Can you assign subjects into different levels of gender? Although gender would be an important independent variable, obviously, gender cannot be experimental variable. 
Remember, the experimental variable should be deliberately manipulated or varied by a researcher. And it is obvious that many social and behavioral research variables are not to be manipulated. There are also several practical challenges in implementing experimental research. Researchers are often struggling the legal and equity issues of experimental research. For example, can we easily assign our students into various types of educational setting? Furthermore, the benefit of random assignment can be warranted a subject size increase. In social and behavioral research, conducting research with many subjects is not always feasible. Post-test. Only control group design is one of the popular type of random experimental design. The post-test only control group design contains as many groups as there are experimental treatments, plus a control or comparison group. And subjects are measured only after the experimental treatments have been applied. Another popular type of random experimental design is pretest post-test control group design. The pretest post-test control group design contains as many groups as there are in experimental treatments, plus a control or a comparison group. Subjects are measured before and after the experimental treatments have been applied. Therefore, this particular research design gives us an option of gain score analysis. Through this gain score analysis, we can investigate the effect of the treatment with controlling the effect of precondition using pretest score. Consequently, this pretest and posttest could be more internally valid than posttest only because of controlling a spurious effect, which is the precondition. So far, we learned random experimental research design. Let's move on to another type of experimental research design, which is called the quasi-experimental research design. Again, there are two different types of experimental research. The first one is random or true experimental research, and the other is a quasi-experimental research. Both of them assign subject into the levels of given independent variable, which is experimental variable. If one is randomly assigning a subject, that research becomes random or true. If one is assigning a subject in a non-random way, that research design becomes a quasi-research design. Let's learn more details of quasi-experimental design. Quasi-experimental research involves the use of intact groups of ex subjects in an experiment, rather than assigning subject at random to experimental treatment. When considering problems of validity of quasi-experimental research, limitations should be clearly identified. The equivalence of the groups should be discussed. If the intact group is not equivalent, the conclusion from the quasi-experimental research design is not free from the intact group differences. For example, of teaching method example, we don't know whether the difference in educational outcome is from teaching methods or group differences. For a random experimental design, we are free from this issue when subject size is large. Let's compare research design B and C in terms of types of experimental design and research validity. Which one is which type of experimental design? Which one is more valid while holding other things constant? This is the post-test of the quasi-experimental design. Everything is exactly the same with the previous true experimental design example except the assignment method. In other words, this research design is a post-test only experimental design with the intact group assignment. This is the pre-test and post-test of quasi-experimental design. 
Everything is exactly the same with the previous true experimental design example, except the assignment method. In other words, this research design is the pretest and post as only experimental design with the intact group assignment. So far, we learned the concept of experimental design. Also, we learned two different types of experimental design, which are random experimental design and quasi-experimental design. Let's move on to non-experimental research design. Non-experimental research design can easily be defined as a research design without any experimental variable. Many variables in an educational setting do not lend themselves to deliberate manipulation. For example, sex, intelligence, aptitude, and SES cannot be randomly assigned to individuals or manipulated in an experiment. Consequently, many social and behavioral research is non-experimental research. In other words, post facto type of research. Also, both casual or correlational type of research could be a non-experimental research. Please identify and explain your own research design, whether it is an experimental research or a non-experimental research. Holding other things constant, non-experimental research is mostly easy to implement. However, that is least internally valid. Trivially, holding other things constant, random experimental research is mostly hard to implement. However, that is mostly internally valid. Therefore, researchers should carefully choose these types of research considering various aspects of research. So far, we learned the concept of experimental research and non-experimental research. Let's move on to the details of research validity. We already learned two types of research validity, external and internal. I will now introduce you other types of research validity, which are construct validity and statistical conclusion validity. Internal validity is the validity of the cause and effect inference linking the independent variable and the dependent variable. We can increase or secure internal validity by conducting research with good research design. Construct validity is the validity of the definitions of the independent and the dependent variables and the way that those variables are operationalized. We can increase or secure construct validity by conducting research with good definition, operation, operationalization, and measurement. Statistical conclusion validity is the validity that deals with the accuracy of the decision about whether the experimental and control groups differ. We can increase or secure statistical conclusion validity by conducting research with good statistical analysis option. We already learned external validity, the generalizability of the results of the experiment. We will discuss options for getting external validity when we learn sampling design. Let's learn the specific examples of threatening internal validity. First, history or event. If unanticipated events occurring while the experiment is still in progress, we concern the internal validity of the research. Second, maturation. Maturation means the processes operating within the subject as a function of time. This is similar to mortality. Third, testing. Testing means the effect of taking one test on the scores of a subsequent test. Fourth, instrumentation. This means the inconsistency of measurement. This is also an internal reliability issue. Fifth, selection or non-random assignment. We discussed this issue when we compare non-random assignment and random assignment. The textbook provides more examples and further explanations. 
Students refer to those information regarding threats to internal validity of research. Construct validity deals with the definitions of the independent and the dependent variables. Specifically, threats to construct validity could be 1. Inadequate pre-operational explication of constructs. This issue is an insufficient and or incorrect definition of the independent and or dependent variable. 2. Mono operation, mono method bias. This is measurement issue by using one aspect or method to measure a construct. We will discuss this issue again when we learn the measurement. As an example, let's talk about teacher quality. How can we define and measure teacher quality in a valid way? What is adequate pre-operational explication of teacher quality? How we measure teacher quality without concerning mono-operation or a mono-method bias. Also, please provide sufficient and clear definition of independent variables and dependent variable in your research question. So far, we reviewed various concepts in research design validity. From here, we will review options on analysis of change over time. There are several different types of data collection over time. First of all, longitudinal data collection method is collecting data over time with tracking each subject. Therefore, longitudinal design involved the collection of data over time and at specified points in time. This data collection method enables research to investigate individual change, i.e. individual trend study. There's another type of data collection over time, which is cross-sectional data collection. Cross-sectional data collection method is collecting data over time without tracking each subject. A cross-sectional design involves data collection at one point in time from a sample or from more than a sample representing two or more population. Compared to longitudinal data collection, Cross-sectional data collection method is easy in terms of collecting and maintaining adequate sample size over time. Single subject design commonly involves repeated measurements and they use the single variable row, changing only one variable at a time. The figure is AB design in single subject design to do analysis on difference between A, baseline period, and B, treatment period. The figure in ABA design in single subject design to do analysis on difference between A, baseline period, and B, treatment period as well. Compared to AB design, ABA design gives us more information on the effect of B treatment. In this lecture, we learned 1. The concept and examples of random experimental research design. 2. The concept and examples of quasi-experimental research design. 3. The concept and examples of non-experimental research design. 4. The concept and examples of research validities. 5. The concept and examples of analysis of change over time.